So what I'd like to do in this screencast is show how to include an SWF flash file um, that's exported from Respondus or um, a lesson builder or something like that. How you can include those within a quiz, which is a little different. Um, and to make sure that these are, once you've created them in a quiz or even in a page or whatever, that when you import that content into a new class, once a class is finished, moving it to a new class, that that material still stays uh, linked and active. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just in a um, practice course of mine. I'm going to go to the quizzes area. I want to do this as a single quiz right now, so we're going to create a new quiz. Uh, we're going to call this SWF Test Quiz. And um, it's just the, for identification testing the SWF files. So let's go to our questions. You could add an SWF in here as well. The process is going to be the same no matter when you go into the editor. We're always going to use this switch view, and you, you're going to see this in the question as well. So here we're going to go do a question. We're going to add this new question, and it comes up with that same interface here. Question one. Um, listen and choose. It's going to be multiple choice. So the first thing we want to do is tell them to listen to the, or I'm sorry, let's say click, click each button to listen to the audio and then select the correct number answer go. So what they're going to do is they're going to click each button in this SWF and it's going to play some audio and they're going to select which one is best out of the four or five and of course I'm just going to have answer one. So to get this in there, so now that we've got our text to define what's happening with the question, we want to switch the views and you'll see some HTML code come up. Um, we want to just start underneath what's already there. This is just the text up here we're going to go ahead and add what's called an iframe. It's the same as embedding the video into there. And the first thing that we have to do to do that is actually have an SWF file. So over here on this right side, you'll see a place for files. Um, and you can look through our course. I've got quite a few files right now, and this is where it would show up. So I want to upload a new file. I have not added this file into there. Um, there are ways that you might want to upload all of your SWFs as one file in one felled swoop. But to do this individually, I'm just going to show you how to do this um, from within the question. So we're going to browse to our file. And for this one, we have this file right here for a Spanish 103 class. So let me go ahead and click that. We're going to tell it to open that file. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom there. And right now we're saving it in course files. Um, we're just going to save it in the general file. You would want to create a folder in here to um, save that. But for this purpose, we're going to upload it real quick. And you'll notice over here that it's put a link in. Once you upload it, it has a link. This is important um, for using the iframe embed. Add a couple spaces after. And we're going to use the code that we showed you right here is the iframe co code and again this just says in a frame I want to see this file at a hundred percent so where is this your course file well that's why this link is very important right here if you notice you see an href from this area right here where it starts at courses all the way through this course f or this file number we want to cut that that is what we're going to use as our course file. Once you've typed that in, make sure you type preview at the end and we can delete the rest of this from the A to the A at the end and done. So what we have now is in a frame it's going to show this course file as a preview at a hundred percent of what it should be of the frame in the middle. So that's what we've done. Now if we go back to switch views you'll notice down here you have a big yellow box and that is correct and it has a little icon in there. That just lets you know it's a placeholder at this point. When we save you'll be able to see that SWF file. 
then you would want to obviously put in your answers. So if we want one, two, three, four, um, actually I think there's five questions. So let's call this five. And they're going to choose any one of those. So we're gonna update this question. And you'll notice when we update the question, you'll see the SWF load and we have these five buttons. Again, when the student takes it, what they're gonna do is they're going to click and each one of these is going to give them a description and they have to choose one of the five that actually fits whatever you're looking for. Nosotros tocamos la guitarra y cantamos. So for this one, let's call it done. We're going to go ahead and save. And there you go. Um, you can preview the quiz. It's going to start going through the test. Here's your question again with your answers. Student would select that, submit, and hey, we've got it right. It's going to show us here that question one is correct. So at this point, this is how we have added an SWF file into a question. So the next portion would be, so you've got it in your first class. Well, what if you want to import this into another class? That's very easy. I'm going to switch here from uh, this practice course to another practice training course I have. You would select whatever course you want to bring it into. And for here, what we're going to do is you want to go to settings. We're going to go over to import content into this course under your settings. And here's the import wizard. We're going to actually grab this from another course that we have access to. So if you're importing from one of your courses into another, this is the way you would do this. So let's go ahead and click that. It's going to ask what course we want. You would select from your course. Obviously, I only have one at this point. So that's the course we want. And copy from this course. We want to click the button. Now, for some reason, it's going to tell you to copy everything. No, no, no. We do not want to copy everything. Once you uncheck that, though, you'll see it breaks down, and you can import individual pieces, parts. Um, one of the things that you can do, rubrics, learning outcomes, obviously quizzes. So we want to take this SWF test quiz that we just imported, and that's the only thing that we need to check if that was the only thing that you would want to import. If there were multiple quizzes, you would obviously make sure that you've checked all the quizzes that you want to import. And then at the very, very bottom, you scroll down and we see this import course content. Very quickly, it will, it says it takes a few minutes and actually it will not take that long. Bam, we're done. And obviously it's going to tell you um, all the different stuff that's within there. Obviously you can see quizzes for this course. This one has been imported. So to see that quiz now, we've imported in. If we go to our quizzes, you'll see the SWF quiz shows up in your unpublished. It comes in as an unpublished quiz. So when you go to click on this and view it, and we'll go and we can either preview, let's just do an edit right here. I wanna show you something very important. And we go to our question. You'll see the SWF file still loads up. The important thing is when you click that quiz and import it, if we go over to the right here and we quick click the files area and then look at our course files, you'll notice that SWF file also came along with the quiz. So it keeps this link active. And that's the important thing is to make sure that that SWF comes over. So um, again, on the import, we just click the quiz, click the import, and then you will see that quiz show up in your quiz information. One of the other things that's important when you bring this in is you will be able to go to your question banks and it's going to come up as part of your question bank also. So if you had multiple questions in there and you didn't want to use all of them, you can always manage that from your question bank as well. So all the questions that you have would show up. If you have any questions, please give us a call and we'll be happy to help you with this.